Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Glanfield and today we're taking a look at the Sony 35mm 1.8 made by Sony. I'm very excited about this lens. I've been looking and eyeing for this lens for a long time now. Since it came out, I was very excited when they announced that they made a 35mm 1.8 similar to the one that's filming us right now, the 50mm 1.8. I actually got that one when I purchased my a7 III and it's been an okay lens for it so far. but. It has this downside. So I've been looking forward to getting this one here. It goes for $798 on amazon.ca. I picked this one up for $600 used on the Facebook market. So I was very excited about that deal here. The build quality of this one is incredible. As you can see here, I've got a little dent on it and you can start seeing the metal behind it. It has a great focus ring on here, also made out of metal compared to something like the cheaper kit lens has a little bit more of a rubbery ring on on this one. As you focus it, it is a focus by wire, but it really does feel like a manual focus. The smoothness and how precise it is, they've done a great job with the focus ring. As opposed to a lens like this one, this is the Sigma 30 millimeter. This is an APS-C sensor lens, great lens, but when you focus on this one, if you went really fast, it would manual focus really fast to an object and then it was very unpredictable. You couldn't predict where you were gonna go every time you did it. This one you can a lot better. On the side, you'll notice it has AF, MF, that is your autofocus manual focus button. I do enjoy that this one has it. The 50 millimeter 1.8 filming us right now does not have that. So you have to turn it off inside the camera. It also has a function button on the outside. I've programmed this function button so that it will focus hold on any object. So if I'm filming and I press this button, it'll focus hold. And if I let go, it'll autofocus again. You can program that to anything that you want within the Sony cameras. So that is very cool that they have included that. One of the reasons I chose this one over the competitive ones was because of the size and weight. I feel like it fits perfect on the a7 III and on a smaller compact body like this a6000. I feel like it's a great size and very great compromise between the body to lens ratio. As a comparison here you'll see the Sigma 1.4 you can see the size difference there. I do feel like they've done a great job at packing in a full frame lens at 1.8 in such a small lens. The autofocus on this lens is incredible. I've been testing it on photo and video. It is fast, it is accurate. I'll do a couple tests here for you so that you can see how fast it is and how accurate it is. I'll compare it also with the kit lens as most of you guys will have the kit lens if you bought a full frame body so that you can see how it compares to a kit lens. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the images that I've taken with this 35 millimeter. What I've done is taken some pictures with this 35 millimeter and also taken the same images with the kit lens shot at 35 millimeters so that it is as fair as I can. You guys can see the differences, the sharpness differences and the chromatic aberration and the lens distortion, all those kind of things. And you guys can compare between these two so that you can see if the 35 millimeter is worth it for you. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. Um, if at any time you're wondering which lens I used, here on the top left you can see 35mm was shot with this one and for an example here was shot with a kit lens. I try to keep things as similar as I could. Of course I wasn't able to exactly get 35mm, I got 34mm on the kit lens, but it's pretty close there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Of course the kit lens can't go down to 1.8, so this one is by itself. As you can see the image is quite sharp, but it's not as sharp as you might think as opposed to, let's say if we go to like an F, I think this one's F4, you can see a difference here in chapter two. See how sharp and black those blacks are compared to the 1.8. The 1.8 is a little bit blurrier and it has a little bit of red chromatic aberration as you can see here. And this one has a little bit of green chromatic aberration compared to the F4. Let's go back to that. The F4 does not have any of that. Now let's go ahead and compare different things here. So let's start by looking at F4, which is what the kit lens can shoot at. This one, they were both shot at F4, as you can see. So let's go ahead and take a look in the middle. Wow, what a difference. So you can see already there, the chromatic aberration here is quite heavy. You can see that blue fringing coming on the words here. This is a little bit better, but opposed to this, uh, it is quite noticeable. Again, you can see here on the pages, how sharp those pages are and a little bit softer here. Let's go in the corners. You can see it remains pretty sharp in the corners here on the 35 at f4, whereas the kit lens does not. All right, let's take a look at the same image shot at f8. Let's start with the middle. 
again you can see the noticeable difference with chapter there being very different so let's do the same thing at f10 this was shot at f10 both of them let's start with the watch here you can see the difference there going over to the knife again you can see kershaw clearly here where this one is a little bit blurred one thing to note is that the 35 millimeter you'll see that it has a little bit more of a vignette natural vignette of the lens of course this is a zoom lens so i wouldn't have as much but just something to note it does have a little bit more vignetting but this can be solved very quickly if you go into develop and go to enable profile corrections it'll recognize what it is and as you can see it's straightened out your lines and it removes a little bit of vignette but it's not quite that much vignette I don't mind the vignette. Let's take a look at some other pictures I've taken with this 35 millimeter. As you can see here, a picture of potatoes, my wife holding some potatoes. I should have shot that at higher, but just so you can see at f1.8, it is what you would expect at f1.8. Shouldn't have shot that at that, but just, just that's just a good example. So you can see there at f1.8, that's without the profile corrections and that's with them. I personally don't mind that vignette. I kind of like it. It kind of fits my style of editing. And let's take a look at one more image here. Here's a picture of my wife and I in the snow. That's with the profile corrections and without. I've included all the pictures that we took a look at in the description below so you can download those raw files and play around with them yourself. As reference, they were shot on the a7 III. Well, in conclusion, I think Sony's done a wonderful job with this lens. I think they've packed a lot into this small lens and it is worth your money if you are looking for a 35 millimeter lens. Well, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that like button. It'll help the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.